Hey guys, welcome back to Hardware Unboxed. I'm your host Matt and today we're taking a look at Intel's latest 6th generation Core i7-6700K CPU. It seems a bit odd introducing you guys to the 6th gen Core i7 when just a month ago we introduced the 5th gen i7 for the very first time. As it turns out, Broadwell is just a stepping stone to the 14 nanometer design process and due to complications with the manufacturing process, the series never really materialized. The lengthy delay in rolling Broadwell out meant that it came right on the heels of Skylake, Intel's brand new 14 nanometer tech. Where Broadwell was essentially a Haswell die shrink, Skylake is an updated microarchitecture that brings with it a new socket and support for DDR4 memory. As you might have guessed, the new socket means that Skylake won't be compatible with motherboard sporting a 9 series chipset. Although the 1151 socket isn't backwards compatible with Haswell CPUs, you can still use your LGA 1150 CPU cooler as the location of the mounting holes remains unchanged. The introduction of DDR4 and Intel's mainstream platform means higher memory frequencies can now be achieved, though it is interesting to note that DDR3 support still exists. Therefore, it's likely that budget boards using the B150 chipset, for example, might use more affordable DDR3 memory. At this point, I should also mention that Skylake features a dual channel memory controller. Today, Intel is taking the covers off two new Skylake processors, the Core i7-6700K and the Core i5-6600K, while other 6th generation CPUs CPUs are expected to be released later this year. It's typical for Intel to kick things off with their fully unlocked enthusiast processors as these models generate the most hype. For this video we'll be checking out the Core i7-6700K, although we do also have a video on the more affordable Core i5-6600K, so be sure to check that out next. The Core i7-6700K operates at the same 4GHz base clock as the 4790K. The only difference is in the maximum turbo frequency that's been capped at 4.2 GHz, whereas the 4790K can clock as high as 4.4 GHz. Like all previous Core i7 processors, the 6700K is a quad-core processor supporting hyper-threading, which means there's up to 8 threads available. The 6700K receives the same 8MB L3 cache as the 4790K, and the PCI Express configuration is also the same. This means Skylake still features 16 PCI Express 3 lanes. So a single GPU can connect to the CPU in a 1x16 configuration, while a two-way Crossfire SLI will use the 2x8 configuration. Intel claims that the 6700K will deliver up to 10% better performance when compared to its Haswell counterpart, the 4790K. That isn't a significant claim for a revamped architecture and we hope to see reasonable improvements in most of our tests. That being said, let's get right down to it. First up, we're taking a look at the Cinebench scores. In the multi-threaded test, the 6700K scored a disappointing 5 CB marks less than the 4790K. These results are disappointing because both processors operate at similar frequencies and it shows a lack of improvement in instructions per cycle. The single-threaded results were much the same. Though for whatever reason, the 6700K was consistently faster by a small margin, eking out the 4790K by 6 CB marks in our tests. Next, we tested with what I assume is pronounced Web Export, which contains six HTML5 and JavaScript based workloads. The results were much in line with those we saw in Cinebench, underwhelming. Performance was very close to both the 4790K and the 5775C. Again, in our Excel test, we see very similar performance to the i7 4790K. This time it was slightly slower again. I guess Intel meant it when they said up to 10% better performance when compared to its Haswell counterpart. There was no surprise or redemption in the 7-zip benchmark with the 6700K scoring 8% less than the 4790K. The Photoshop results were quite disappointing for the new 6700K, with our custom workload taking more than 2 seconds longer than the 5775C and the 4790K again beating it out. Finally, the 6700K was able to top our table, coming in a whole frame faster than the 4790K. Yep, that's an entire frame per second. Probably nothing worth writing home about. Now it's time to take a look at the integrated graphics performance, which we aren't expecting too much from, but hopefully there is some improvement. In Bioshock Infinite, we were pleased to see the 6700K beat out the 4790K by a decent margin. Don't get me wrong, it's still slow, and at these low settings the game looks like rubbish, but at least the performance was better. The performance didn't compare, however, to the RS performance of the 5775C. Hitman Absolution was quite similar, however the 6700K did manage to rein in RS Pro a little. It was also 5 frames faster than the 4790K again, which was good to see. In Tomb Raider, the 6700K was quite a way ahead of the 4790K, a 14 frames per second advantage. 
However, it was well behind Iris Pro on the 5775C, which managed a comparably massive 97 frames per second. These integrated graphics scores aren't bad for the 6700K and there was slight improvement over the 4790K. However, they're most likely pretty irrelevant since anyone affording a flagship processor is probably not looking to play these games without a discrete graphics card. Next up, we tested performance with the GeForce GDX 980 running the same games with max quality settings. In Bioshock, expectedly the 6700K's performance was exactly the same as its rivals as this is a GPU bound game. Hitman Absolution generally weighs pretty heavily on both the GPU and the CPU. However, at the settings we tested with, it tends to be more GPU dependent. As you can see from the results, which are all very similar. Metro Redux is heavy on the CPU, and as you can see, there's a noticeable difference between the 4690K and the 4790K, and even more so to the AMD FX 8350. However, if we look at the 4th, 5th, and 6th gen Core i7 processors, we see no difference. We used Handbrake to assess power consumption, and the results were slightly better than the 4790K, consuming 10% less power. So at least we're seeing an improvement in efficiency from this 6th gen processor. Well, that was disappointing to say the least. The 6700K was no faster than the 4790K, and at times, due to a 200 MHz slower turbo frequency, it was actually slower. For years now, Intel's been moving forward in baby steps. The jump from Sandy Bridge to Ivy Bridge netted around 10% extra performance. At the time, everyone seemed disappointed with such a minor performance bump, but then Haswell came along the following year and only offered another 10% bump at best. Now we have Skylake touted as the biggest step forward since Sandy Bridge. From what we've seen so far performance wise, it's actually one of the smaller steps forward we've seen in a long time. For a platform that calls in new chipsets and adopts the latest memory technology, we were shocked to only find 4790K like performance. With virtually nothing changing in terms of CPU performance, what can we possibly take away from this first look? Not much to be honest, but we can say Skylake does consume around 10% less power to deliver the same results. Something we didn't look at in this video was overclocking, and I can confirm that our retail chip was an overclocking beast, hitting almost 5 GHz without much effort. For those of you interested in finding out more about 6700K's overclocking abilities, please check out our overclocking video. Other advantages can be found when comparing the Z170 and Z97 chipsets. The Z170 connected to the CPU using the DMI 3.0 interface, which enabled 20 PCI Express 3 lanes as opposed to just 8 PCI Express 2 lanes for the Z97. So in theory, the Z170 should be better for multi-GPU setups. The Z170 also supports 10 USB 3 ports, whereas the Z97 was limited to just 6. Price-wise, the 6700K is set to come in at the same $350 MSRP as the 4790K, which is good news, but keep in mind that you also have to spring for a 100 series motherboard and DDR4 memory. Thanks for joining me for this first exclusive look at the 6700K. This has been Matt for Hardware Unboxed. Let me know what you think in the comments. Hit like, hit subscribe, and we'll see you next time.